Hey guys, it's Artsy, and in today's video, I'm going to be going over some tips and tricks on how to get really good at art really fast. Obviously, I'm not like a professional, so take whatever I say with a grain of salt. Also, this is just what helped me, and everyone's different, so maybe these things won't help you. I'm not really sure. But anyways, let's get into it. My first piece of advice is to take long stretches of drawing, not every day, but as often as you can, and take long breaks. Now, this isn't really as much about drawing, and it's more just about, like, you know, workflow. And I am the hugest advocate of if you have art block, just push yourself through it. But if you don't have art block, and you're just tired and stuff, and you don't feel like drawing, and you really just do need a break instead of just not knowing what to draw, not knowing what to draw is a different issue, but if you need time, then just take a long break, take... And by long, I mean even like as long as a month or two, if you need time, so you can come back and re inspired and liking everything you make, and that is just su seems super helpful for me. And when I feel like I I can't do it anymore, or I've been drawing too much, and I feel like I just need some time to focus on other stuff, I take a really long break, and then I come back and I fall back in love with art, and it's kind of a cycle, and I think it works really well for me. Although if you have a job or you need to be consistent when it comes to like art or posting on YouTube. This isn't going to work too well. Now when it comes to the other side, which is drawing every day, um, I don't mean every day, every part of your life. I mean like commit to drawing every day for like a month or two months or something and I guarantee it will help you feel better about your art and more motivated and improve a lot. And then when you start to lose steam, take a break. That's the cycle I follow but try and draw every day for a long while and then take a long break. All right, tip number two, use different mediums and experiment with different materials. So I know that a lot of people are scared to go out of their comfort zone when it comes to what materials they use. Like they try digital art and they don't quite like it, but have you heard of that rule that's like, oh, you have to try three bites or two bites of food before you determine whether you like it or not? So try and do something out of your comfort zone a couple times before you commit to a um, opinion about it because I've definitely like done something and then just not liked it because I'm not used to it. But I think it's important to try multiple times and maybe, I don't know, maybe you miss out on a super important or not important but a super fun opportunity or new style that you could have loved but you decided not to go with it because you were scared or... but. Anyways, just experiment with different materials, traditional, digital, maybe even try like sculpting or something. Art classes are really good with this. I recommend taking an art class. I'm not in one right now because I had to t commit to singing or art and I chose singing, but next year I'm taking an art class and maybe I'll take an art class outside of school this year, but they really push you out of your comfort zone, help you build a portfolio and yeah. Don't mind my dog in the background barking, but I just wanted to hop in here and say that the things I'm about to draw totally suck, and I wasn't going to include them, but then I decided to to show you guys that, like, when you start off with something else, it's going to be a rocky start, but you'll get the hang of it, so yeah. Kind of similar to the last one, but number three, draw things that you aren't good at or experienced with, again, because it pushes you outside of your comfort zone, and if you're working on one thing, even if it's not your main priority, people like people who have studied realism are much better at art than people who have not, even if they're both cartoonists. So you need to experiment with different things and draw all sorts of things. Like I don't often draw boys, but sometimes I feel like I need to draw boys because it's important art skill. Same with animals. Um, I'm tr I've been trying to practice some backgrounds lately, but you just need to stretch out and draw things that you aren't used to or good at because that's how you improve even if it's not your favorite thing but it'll help you improve the drawing that you're really committed to number four this one's kind of a harsh truth but it's just my style isn't an excuse i used to draw my necks super long on my characters and when somebody would be like um that looks a little bit wonky i'd be like no it's my style though um, that, that's not an excuse. If somebody tells you something looks wrong, you should probably change it. It's probably not your style. Um, a style looks good in basically all parts, and even if the anatomy isn't perfect or it's kind of wonky, it still looks good. If somebody says that something doesn't look good and you're like, oh, it's my style, then maybe you should change your style, or maybe you should stop using that as an excuse and correct your mistakes. That probably came across really mean. Um, I'm sorry to anyone who took it that way. I just mean 
that you need to be open to criticism to improve your artwork not like i saw i said that in such a mean way i'm i apologize <laughs> moving on my next tip is the tried and true have fun obviously but try and if you don't like art don't pursue art i'm not saying if you don't like it sometimes because everyone doesn't like their hobbies sometimes but if the majority of the time you have fun creating then create things you're gonna have fun creating obviously sometimes you're gonna need to do things you don't want to do but the whole point of having not having a job but having a career is that you're supposed to love your career and that's it's not oh you're not always going to love your career but I'm just saying try and have fun because art is a creative outlet and it's very important that your art will be better if you're enjoying it. And I'm not saying force yourself to enjoy it, but just try to enjoy it. Sorry about that noise. It was um, me getting a reminder on my phone that I spent way too much time on my phone. My sixth tip is to use references because all great artists use references. You think the Mona Lisa was painted from like memory no there was a person posing and that's a reference and it's not the same kind of reference that i'm talking about where nowadays we use like pinterest and stuff but it's still a reference and it's the same idea and you need to be using references if you can are struggling with something or if you want to improve because you can't just know everything all of the time and i know that some people who are very headstrong <coughs> me um were very resistant to using references at first but it's an important part of the process, and if you don't know how to draw a hand, just look up the hand in that position, or take a picture of your own hand, because everyone that ever drew has drawn, drawn from life. Um, so why would you pretend? Why would you try and do anything else? Number seven, go to places that have artwork and study artwork, and like practice and copy people, and even if it takes it trace, I don't think tracing is bad. I think it's bad if you're taking someone's artwork and reposting it online, but in your own time, copy and do studies and trace other people's artworks because that's what's gonna help you understand better um, anatomy and things like that and how to draw things and improve from there. Also, go to museums, that's where you'll find, and bring a sketchbook or bring your phone, whatever you're gonna draw on, go to a museum and just draw at the museum and I'm not saying like spend all your time drawing, but just like sketch down some things, take away some lessons that you learned, at least try to if you can. And going with that, surround yourself with people who also love art and are interested in drawing or painting or sculpting, whatever you do, collaging, because they're going to give you true heartfelt advice and they're gonna know what you're talking about and you're gonna be able to talk about things relating to your hobbies together and it's you both are going to improve together it's just so nice to have someone with you that understands the struggles you have and can give you advice and you can share and you can grow together last but not least and definitely most importantly realize that as much as you can watch all of these videos and you can go to all the classes and stuff you're not going to improve overnight you're going to improve based on the amount of time you put in you get what you put in and if you're practicing every day for five hours a day yeah you're gonna get way better than someone who's practicing like a couple times a week for like 20 minutes a day because that's just the way it works if you put your heart and soul into it you will improve quickly and that's why it's important to do something that you're passionate about and if you're passionate about creating you're going to get better and you're going to really put yourself into it and that's what's going to make you get better because you're going to dedicate your time to something that you love all right that's all i have for you guys today thank you for watching i hope you found my tips helpful um if you did leave it in the comments ask me some questions below because i'm doing a q a sort of video and i'll see you guys next time bye